Hey everyone, Pugs here with two new reviews for y'all. Today, we're reviewing Pizza Delivery and Home Sweet Pineapple. Perhaps a little bit of a daunting task, considering one of these episodes is considered to be one of the greatest of all time. Um, hopefully, no matter what I have to say about it, um, I won't be chased out of town with pitchforks. Yay! Um, like usual, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching these videos. I like saying that at the beginning rather than the end, so people will hear it right away. Like, listen, I just have a lot of gratitude. Even if it's only one person, I'm going to thank them. My parents did not raise an ungracious child, and that's that on that, you know? Uh, anyway, before I get started, I did just want to address the fact that yes, double upload this week. I'm not sure if this is something I'll be able to do all the time, but I was able to record two videos on the same day, which means I was able to get this video out sooner. If I do manage to make a routine out of that, I'm thinking I'll upload on Saturdays and someday during the weekday, like maybe Wednesdays, not sure. We'll see though. Um, anyway, I'm excited to get this show on the road. Um, I'm always excited to get this show on the road because I love talking Spongebob as I'm sure you guys have picked up on by now. Um, so let's just get right into it. Starting off our review today, we've got the one and only pizza delivery. This is definitely one of the most recognizable and well-known episodes of Spongebob Squarepants, and I'm sure at least one person was anticipating my getting to this episode. I mean, maybe that person was just me, but I can hope, right? Um, so let's just get to talking about this episode because I can feel the flames of the torches now. Just kidding, or am I? Okay, let me actually get to it because I'm stalling. Um, to start off with, let me just say that pizza delivery is funny. Like, let's not beat around the bush. Like, joke after joke come and go, and they're all hilarious. And one thing I think that helps this episode is that it has such a simple plot. And before you have any kind of misunderstandings or misattributions, I've got three qualifications here. So one, this episode is not boring by any means. It continues to be engaging throughout, never drags for me, so don't even start. Um, two, this does not mean that there isn't a place for complex sponge complex plots in Spongebob Squarepants, because there are, and there's plenty of great episodes with more complex plots. And three, this is not to say that complex plots aren't funny. I only mean having a simple plot allows for more jokes since they aren't told at the expense of the story. And this also means that there's a lot more rooms for the jokes to breathe. And speaking of jokes, um, I think my favorite joke of the episode is either backing up or when Squidward says he doesn't care about the customer and the weather like stops so Spongebob could just like say Squidward's name all like affronted and offended. Um, there's also like the ever iconic hitchhiking scene or, you know, it's not a boulder, it's a rock. Like those are good contenders too. Um, I definitely quote the latter a lot more than I should, but I mean... You know, that's just the life, right? Everyone talks about making Spongebob references all day long. I'm no different. Um, anyway, I also somehow forgot to talk about this in my written review, which is like insane. But like, I can't really go without mentioning the entire Krusty Krab pizza segment with Spongebob like essentially ad-libbing that whole thing. <laughs> and then like, and then the part at the end where he like brings in the soul and oh my god. And like his expressions throughout that entire scene is great. And I love like when Squidward is just like literally what is going on. Um, yeah, just fantastic. And I love the expressions in that scene. And, you know, I didn't even think about this until right now, but like this episode is like the basis for like one of my favorite um, YouTube poops of all time, actually. And yes, I do watch YouTube poops. I guess I just added myself for that one. Oh, well. But anyway, like, um, Deliver Us, like, that was from this episode. I should probably link that in the description. It's a very fun, it's a very interesting YouTube poop. Um, anyway, and I, um, last I checked, it has, like, two parts or some crap. I don't know. I mean the original. I haven't even watched the other one. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, like, let's talk about how heartwarming the end of this episode is. Like, when Squidward, who, up until this point, hasn't shown any warmth towards Spongebob. Like, he stands up for Spongebob against that jerkwad customer. Like, this moment is so touching and heartwarming and pretty much iconic because of what I just said about Squidward's lack of warmth towards Spongebob, and also because we're always rooting for the little yellow guy. And like, up until this point, we'd never seen Spongebob cry, and it's like, seeing him cry because of this rude customer, like, makes us as vengeful as Squidward, let's just be real about that. 
and like yeah there's a little humor here of how ridiculous spongebob looks when he cries because he's a sponge and he like drains and fills back up and yeah blah 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 um but it's still like a sad moment so like it makes squidward's actions all the more satisfying when he basically punches the customer in the face um and it becomes even more satisfying if you're like me and have worked in service before uh <laughs> yeah um i could easily get into spongebob's appeal for older audiences simply through having adult characters like i could definitely do that um but i'll save that rant slash analysis for another time like you know i kind of wonder if i should just make a video about that i don't know that's something to consider at a t point in time that is not now. Um, let me move on. So one thing I noticed in this episode is that the backgrounds are like exceptionally beautiful here. Um, the beginning shot of the Krusty Krab is one of my absolute favorite backgrounds in the entire show. Like it's been my signature on um, SpongeBob form for a while. Uh, pretty sure I use it as like the background to like one of my um, browsers. Like it's just beautiful. I love the purples and the pinks, and it just all looks really nice. Um, the interior of the Krusty Krab is great as well in this episode. I just love the vibes. Like, I love how, like, dark it is because, you know, they're closing. It just really looks cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's, like, a cool panoramic shot of the Krusty Krab interior out there on the internet. Like, I'm pretty sure it's on the SpongeBob Wiki page, like, down at the production art. So I'll make sure to link that. Um, also, speaking of background art, like, all the shots at night, and of the desert are like amazingly painted and they're like really atmospheric um which you know that's something i'll always praise but like i just remember like the clouds being like stretched out because you know they are in the desert and the clouds are just really long and it just looks really cool um and you know aesthetics and atmosphere are just really important to me <laughs> and you can see what i mean by like the vibes of this episode like by looking at the production images on the wiki like i just said so like i said i will definitely make sure to link that in the description and while we're on the topic of production, let's give it up to the iconic track, Stack of Lays, which made its first appearance in this episode. Like, my favorite sad track in Spongebob is actually Comic-Con EB, but like, let's not pretend that Stack of Lays isn't the most iconic of them all, other than like, maybe Hawaiian Cocktail, like that one's also up there. Um, so with that settled, let's discuss the elephant in the room. Do I think pizza delivery is one of the all-time greats? Is it in my top five or even top 10 of SpongeBob SquarePants? And you know, a lot of websites rank it as the top 10 or top 20, um, even sometimes top five SpongeBob episodes of all time. I'll link a couple of those in the description. So do I think it's up there? My answer is no. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, put the pitchforks down, put the torches down. Okay, hear me out. Uh, it's definitely an excellent episode, <laughs> and it is one of the best of the season. Heck, I'd call it one of the best of the show. However, I would also argue that it is the second most overrated episode of the show. And yes, I said second. I'm sure you can guess what the number one might be. Uh, but, like, I'd like to clarify that when it comes to rating the best episodes of the show, things get extremely varied extremely quickly. Like, because so many of the best episodes of Spongebob are, in my opinion, the same quality. Like, quality judgments are already subjective, but like, throw in multiple excellent episodes where the only differences for people are like, how much they like one joke over the other, and like, shoot, like, whole rankings can be flipped, swapped, inverted, the whole works. So like, pizza delivery, it doesn't top my list. It's near the tail end of my top five season one episodes when it even makes that ranking. And like, if I did numerical rankings past my favorite three episodes of this show, it probably wouldn't make the top 10. Probably may not even make the top 20. But that's not to say I don't understand why so many people rate it so highly. And like, I'm not about to tell people that they have incorrect ratings. Like I just said, it's all subjective. And like, pizza delivery is still good. So it's like, I have nothing wrong with someone saying that's one of the best episodes of the show. It's just, I personally don't think it is. And, like, Pizza Delivery is an excellent quality episode. It's just sometimes the shine on it can leave out some of the other greats that deserve the same recognition. And I guess that's my definition of overrated in any case. But like I said, Pizza Delivery is still great. Uh, it's in my amazing tier, and it comes in with a score of 9.4 out of 10. Moving on, we've got an episode that I probably have much less to say about. Um, Home Sweet Pineapple. 
And this is an episode I've never really had particularly strong feelings about. And I don't really think a lot of other people do either. Um, I'm sure a large part of that is because it's paired with pizza delivery of all episodes. So it kind of gets, you know, overshadowed. And like, this is a good episode. But for the longest time, I'd never really had much to say beyond that, you know? But now that I've been writing and recording these long episode reviews for a while now, like, I've got a bit more practice in fleshing out what I have to say. And so here's what I've come up with, the short version at least. Um, Home Sweet Pineapple is a good, solid episode. It has humor and emotional moments at the right places. However, there's nothing remarkable about this episode, and it has a rather dull start. Now, of course, I'd never leave a review at just that, so let me get into this a little bit. Uh, First, the good. This episode is pretty funny. All the jokes land for me, although none of them really get me, as they say, um, rolling on the floor, like they have in some of the previous episodes. I liked the whole, is it time to ruin Squidward's day gag, and the ending with Squidward under the pineapple was pretty funny too. I also did like uh, the Spongebob trying to sleep at Patrick scene, um, though it did kind of drag on for just a bit too long for my liking. Um, I like how in these early episodes, they're really... They really just kind of said no (laughs) to being consistent with how Patrick's house works. Um, And, you know, I can appreciate that. Um, In terms of emotional moments, this episode does deliver with some masterful usage of South Pacific Island 2, might I add. That's a very underrated track that I will be linking. Um, I also appreciated seeing more of Gary in this episode because you already know I love that snail. And I will be mentioning him every single time. Um, it's kind of funny, though, because his size clearly had not been established at this point, I guess, because, like, he's really freaking big in this episode. Um, this episode also marks the first appearance of Spongebob's parents, and while we don't really get to see much of them, I do appreciate their character design. I can't count the number of times I've seen the same exact tweet about thinking Spongebob's parents and grandmother were, like, cookies. Like, am I the only one who never even, like, made that connection as a child? Like, I always thought they were sponges. Like, I don't know. Um, anyway, like, I thought the background art in this episode was also very well done, like, especially with, like, the early morning scenes, like, at the end of the episode, like, just very nice. I like the blue and the green and to yellow, you know, I just think it looks really nice. Um, as always, you know, very nice work for these background artists. Um, now, to talk about the quote-unquote bad. Um, I say it like that because it's kind of a bit of a misnomer to me, as there's nothing really bad about this episode, in my opinion. It's more like... There are just things here that didn't quite work for me. Firstly, as I said before, the beginning of this um, episode was a little slow for me. Like, the nematodes bit just wasn't really all that funny for me. So I kind of found that to be a little dull. And then, like, the scene with Patrick, like, it was funny, but then it kind of just, like, kept going long after I thought it would be over. So it was just like, okay. Um, In general, I feel like this episode is an example of what I call, like, the slowness of season one. Um, As I explained, I'm pretty sure in my last video, or might have been two videos ago I don't remember but like in this case like that quality didn't quite work in its favor um even with these like small problems that I have with it like home sweet pineapple is still enjoyable to me and because of that I think it kind of fits right into my good tier um I think this is the first episode of the show that I'm rating with this tier so I guess that's a milestone too I mean I guess it sounds a little insulting since good is under great and amazing but like it's still something new So, congratulations, Home Sweet Pineapple. You are the first episode with a good tier, and I'm rating you with a 7 out of 10. As always, I'd like to end this review with some closing thoughts of mine. Frankly, I don't really have that many this time around because my head's kind of empty. I feel like this is the first time in making one of these reviews that I felt there were some real missing pieces to like the reviews I posted online a few months back, like especially with pizza delivery. So I guess that's one thing I really like about recording reviews like this. Like I get to add all of my thoughts and like given the semi-scripted nature of these reviews, like there's plenty of room for me to just kind of say whatever comes to mind. So I do appreciate that. And it's also fun that I got to review one of the most famous episodes of Spongebob Squarepants. Like, I mean, Help Wanted, Ripped Pants, and Bubble Stand are all, like, up there in popularity. But, like, Pizza Delivery is the one that, like, continuously makes the best of all timeless. So it's kind of nice to put my own little spin on that. And I guess that's also why I like that I'm reviewing every episode anyway, because, like, I like, I've got a lot to say about every minute of this show. And 
yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess that was just like a bunch of rambling <laughs> that I know made no sense. But my head really is empty right now. Um, and I think that's all I really have to say for closing thoughts today. Uh, I guess I'll just like end the video here. So I'll see you guys next time.